Peter Lundstrom, Chair of the Environment Committee, and I'll call the meeting to order for June 14th, 2022. Welcome. We have a quorum, so we can get rolling with the call to order, and is there a motion to approve today's agenda? So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Hey, uh, with authority. All right. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, we have uh, the minutes from May 24th, 2022. Is there a motion and a second to approve those minutes? Move approval as submitted. Thank you. Second. A second has been made. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Here we go. And that takes us to our consent agenda where we have two items. Uh, which are the City of Vermilion's 2040 Comp Plan and Comprehensive Sewer Plan, and the City of Bethel's Comprehensive Plan and Sewer Plan as well. Is there a motion and second for the consent agenda? Move approval. I'll second. A second. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Carries. Moving right along to two items on our non-consent agenda item today. First one is 2022-167, authorization to hold a public hearing on the draft facility plan for the 1MN320 reconstruction project. Welcome back. Thank you, Chair Lindstrom. Uh, thank you, committee members. For the record, my name is Tim Wadeen. I am Assistant Manager with Interceptor Engineering. I'm here to present on business item 2022-167, authorization to hold a public hearing on the draft facility plan for the 1MN320 reconstruction project, MCES project number 809205. I know we've been talking with you quite a bit about uh, a number of things that are going on here with this project, but as a refresher, the, the project location that we're looking at is just south of Highway 55 in Minneapolis, just a little bit w west of I-94. Um, the highlighted area that I'm showing here is, is the area of, of, of interest for the project where we're looking at um, to improve 1MN320 1MN, uh, and, and the, um, the condition of the pipe in that location. Excuse me. A little bit of history about uh, the 1MN320 pipe. It was constructed back in 1889 as a combined sewer. Uh, it's composed of a 86 inch brick and stone arched pipe uh, and supported on wood piles. I know that uh, Mr. Gordon, uh, manager of uh, uh, Interceptor Engineering, has shown you some um, uh, photos of this pipe. Uh, this is the one that is in a heart shape now instead of round. <laughs> um, and so we are trying to uh, work on some improvements that will address a lot of the interceptor condition um, that we have in this, this area. So looking at addressing our failing pipe, um, looking at addressing some, some flat grades that we have that are really causing some problems with debris accumulation in the pipe, and really trying to do what we can to improve flow and odor conditions through the project area. So as a part of that work, we are preparing a facility plan and have been doing a number of, a lot of outreach um, to the area. Um, we've been meeting quite a bit with the city of Minneapolis since about early 2022 to discuss various reconstruction options for the project. Currently, our plan is to hold an open house on the project in August of this year, um, following that up with a public hearing, provided uh, committee and council approval in October of 2022. Once we have held that public hearing, we will have uh, council, uh, revise the facility plan to reflect the information provided at that public hearing, uh, present that to the council in December of 2022, um, provided that that's adopted in, by the council in 2022, we'll submit the final facility plan to the Pollution Control Agency in February of 2023. With that, our proposed action is that the Metropolitan Council authorize a public hearing in October of 2022 to gather input on the draft facility plan for the 1MN320 reconstruction project, MCES project number 809205. And with that, I'm available for questions. Any questions for Mr. Woodin? Please. Thank you, Chair. I just was wondering, is uh, the new construction, will that last 130 years, uh, like the what we're replacing? Can we expect that? 
I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Chair, Council Members, could you repeat the question? Yeah, well, uh, well the uh, quality of construction lasts 130 years like the previously work done. We, we hope so. Um, <laughs> our, our plan is to, to or the, the solution that we're looking at is, is reconstructing the facility, um, putting a new pipe in the ground. Um, concrete pipe, especially a reinforced con or a, a line concrete pipe, um, whole boss pipe, a lot of the materials that we're using these days will last in the neighborhood of about 50 to 80 years. Um, so, so we hope that we'll get the same uh, or similar lifespan out of this facility as, as we've been able to get out of the, the facility in the past since it was constructed in 1889. Okay, thank you. We're going to call you if, uh, if it doesn't <laughs> last that long. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bring so, your shovel. That sounds reasonable. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, is there a motion? I'd make, ooh, it's your turn. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the item as presented. And a second. A second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that takes us to our second item, which is 2022-168, ratification of emergency declaration for Seneca Headworks belt replacement. Welcome to the committee. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chair, Council Members. So I'm going to start out uh, business item 2022-168, ratification of emergency declaration for the Seneca belt replacement. Uh, this. So just to kind of review the emergency declaration process, uh, infrastructure concern is identified and investigated. MCS has a... Uh, had a blanket contract with the supplier, but it wasn't large enough to cover this event, this repair. Uh, determination was made to follow the council's procurement policy was, or determination made that the, following the council's procurement policy to renew this blanket would unacceptably delay the commencement of work to repair the facility. Emergency declaration document is prepared and signed by the general manager. And after review, the emergency declaration is authorized by the regional administrator who has delegated authority pursuant to the council's procurement policy. Purchase order was issued to the supplier for the material and labor to install the new belt system. And the emergency deck is ratified for by the Metropolitan Council. If the cost is correct, if the cost to correct the emergency exceeds 175,000, hence why we're here today. So we had a failure of the headworks conveyor um, in, in, in this equipment, um, the serpentine grit conveyor system at Seneca. Regular preventive maintenance had been in place, but did not catch uh, this particular failure mode. Uh, the equipment was due for a major overhaul, uh, but that had not been scheduled yet. And at that time, the belt was not able to stay to do the, it came off and we was not able to get it put back on to where it would stay. Uh, so they tried a couple times and they couldn't keep it running. It wasn't reliable. And so the best option was to go ahead and remove it and then uh, manually take care of it. So, it's Council Member and Chair. Um, the, with the belt failure that happened and that belt would continuously pop out of the track, um, this is a, for some background, this belt runs 24-7, 365. It is the main grit and removal belt for all the debris that is coming into the plant from the sewer system. The bar screens then break, you know, anything that's large onto that conveyor. And also our grit chambers do also load onto that conveyor that then gets conveyed to dumpsters. So this is a 24-7 operation. And when that belt did go down, that required us to then have people on site 24 seven in that building then to manually rake all the debris that's coming in down into buckets and then manually empty those buckets into a dumpster. And anyway, on the other side, we had a, uh, a grit. Uh, so the grit coming out of the grit chamber also is on a different level than what you see in the picture. And that also went into buckets and then had to be manually um, put into a dumpster. So as you can imagine, that uh, that manual work is very dirty. It's uh, within a space that has a very hazardous um, atmosphere. So keeping people in there for a continuous 24-7 was uh, not optimal, but it, we needed to do that to keep the work going. 
part of our issue that we may have is that back in February of 17, um, the city of Egan had a major plug at about 2 a.m. And so they had a plug in one of their 20 inch uh, main lines to our interceptor. So this is a city owned pipe. It did start backing up into residents' homes. So as you can imagine, they at 2 a.m. were not um, thinking about we had to call the plant to let them know that we're gonna be sending them something. They just got going to clear the plug and get the residents taken care of. About two hours later, as you can see in the picture, this is just some of the big scum bog that was in that pipe, did make it down to our bar screens at our plant and immediately stopped flow. They hit the bar screens, our bar screens then went, uh, went down. And that is about six very large dumpsters worth of a very heavy material that's been sitting in a pipe for many years. We don't really know how many years. Um, that additional weight that that belt does not see in a normal condition, we do believe hastened the demise of this belt and uh, lessened its life. So then at that point, uh, maintenance, uh, after we decided repairing it, um, was not going to get it back in service. Um, we did an assessment. It was determined that the, the belt and the tracking was um, beyond repair and would need replaced. Um, the main structural uh, framework of the system was okay, but the belt and the rails and everything you see laying there is, is what got pulled out. Um, we uh, contacted the equipment manufacturer, found out about availability of parts and if they could make a replacement for us right away. Um, and then uh, the, the quickest, most reliable was to just replace the entire belt and track system as opposed to trying to take out some links or patch it um, because it was all wore at the same uh, amounts. And the estimated cost was a little over 181000 which is what the emergency deck is for. Um, so they supplied a quote. Um, that quote exceeded what we had capacity on our blanket that we normally buy our parts from them from. And so we proceeded with the emergency deck and then our own crews started removing all the old belt and stuff and getting it out of the way while they were working on building the new belt for us. And then the installation, um, they actually did a really good job of, of turning this around for us, the, the manufacturer. Um, they were... Uh, arrived on site uh, the week of May 16th. They started, we started the installation on the 17th and it was up and running by 11 a.m. on the 19th. So the process, once we had the material, was fairly quick to get it back up and running. Um, and that's the pictures of the, the new belt in use um, as it runs through that building and then dumps into the dumpster. And so our proposed action is that the Metropolitan Council ratify the emergency declaration um, attached to the business item for the repair of the Seneca plant headworks conveyor. And then if you have any questions, we'll try to answer them. Thank you, questions, yes, please, Councilmember Wolf. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I realized they weren't thinking about notifying us at two o'clock in the morning, but did we have words with them about that? <laughs> Chair, <laughs> kind of words. That's I'm a sure. very good question. And yes, um, <laughs> as soon as that happened with the fog, um, our industrial waste and our interceptor system uh, actually Bert Tracy, did reach out to the city of Egan and we had uh, conversations about um, the need to know when these things are happening and uh, we are working together a lot better now to have better communications with Egan's Public Works. And just curious, what would we have done differently if we would have known this scumbag was uh, on, a, on its way? <laughs> Which, by the way, I didn't know that was actually a real thing. I've probably <laughs> known some people that it might def define that way, but I didn't know that was uh, an actual actually, real thing. So I learned something new today. Uh, Chair, I, the, the knowledge that it's coming at you helps you prepare. And that is, uh, it, it was the... Four o'clock in the morning, uh, we run 12 hour shifts. So four o'clock in the morning is getting towards the end of that night shift, which you're not as aware because night shifts are tough. And having that just kind of come out of the blue, watching the influent channel levels go very high. It did overflow 
it did flood mm. part of the building, and then that you know made it very necessary to call in people on overtime immediately to start having a response for cleanup. Mm. And the scumbag actually continued to come in as they were cleaning it and chasing it through their pipe. It did come in for approximately another three hours. Wow. So if you would have known, you could have had all hands on deck ready to deal with the issue. Okay, that's good to know. Can I ask Please. a follow-up? So are, are we kind of maybe letting the rest of the people know as a sort of a, a lesson learned, <laughs> not just Egan, but the other communities that if you have something like this, no matter what time it is, please let us know because it's a disgusting mess for our staff to deal with when they, something breaks and costs a lot of money to get another piece. I mean, I fully understand mm -hmm. the need for the emergency, and it's very fortunate that they were able to get a replacement belt as fast as they did because that's a really nasty job shoveling that mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, but it, it is the opportunity for, like, in a newsletter to the public works people of <laughs> don't be the next one that does this kind of a thing. Is, is anybody looking at that as a communication opportunity for everybody? Yeah, sure. Council member, that's a wonderful idea. And I, I know we have done outreach, and I think this is a lessons learned to communities would be also very good for us to make sure that we bring out. Thank you. 24 7, no matter what the time, here's the number you call. <laughs> yes. um, I think that's good advice. And actually, what I was thinking of, this is really a good. Um, yeah, please come on up. Hi, uh, Bert Tracy, Director of Interceptors. Um, me and my management team are members of what's called SUSA, Suburban Utility Superintendent Association, and we meet monthly with superintendents in the metropolitan area. And these are the things why we meet with them, to talk with them, make sure they know who to call, who to talk to. So we've started those. Uh, so I've been in the association forever, but my management team and them are just getting on it. So they, are, they have a better understanding of who to call, when to call, how to operate, and we work with them a lot closer than we ever did in the past. So just want to let you know that we do communicate with them and we keep up to speed, and they work really well with us. So we're improving everything as we go along. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bert. Thank you, Bert. Um, two quick things. One, uh, this is a good example of why we do tours of <laughs> council for getting the council members like myself out there because I know exactly what you're talking about with that bar screen and the belt. And I remember being in there for probably seconds and toxic environment or hazardous environment. Uh, yeah, uh, I can... Um, Rest assured, uh, I believe that 110%. Uh, number two, um, you said the, it's likely that this, this fog has been building up in this particular area for maybe even years. Is there a, one particular culprit, a restaurant or something, a industry that's right in that neck of the woods that we could also be having conversations with about appropriately dealing with that? Fats, oils, and grease? And Chair, I think fats, oils, and grease is becoming uh, more and more of a conversation to have with our interceptor. Um, as Mr. Tracy works with um, outreach from our side to the communities, um, I think we've had quite a bit of talk on this particular incident with Egan, um, just making sure that best practices are being followed for Grease traps at restaurants, that's generally is probably the biggest issue that is out there, um, mm -hmm. mandating that, making sure that they're being inspected. Great. Other questions? Move approval. Motion has been made. And a second? Second. Seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Carries unanimously. Oh, Mr. You. Chair, Thank you. I, I would add that on our tours, I have looked at what goes in that dumpster also, not just the smell in the room, and that is a really nasty job. It is. It is a nasty <laughs> job, and I would not want to be carrying buckets at 4, 5, 6 in the morning. Uh, or any time um, out to the Deepest dumpster. thanks for the poor people at the bottom of the totem pole that got the duty of breaking that out. Okay. Chair and Councilmember, I will say that everyone shared in that duty, 
that was not just assigned to lowest seniority. Everyone on the shifts did actually share in the duties of doing this. And uh, next time you come down, maybe we can show you the dollar bills that we find in those dumpsters too that are <laughs> stuck on the wall. No one really wants them. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, and on that note, uh, okay, we're good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any uh, none, no information items at this time, but that takes us to general manager's report. Well, it's a quiet summer, knock on wood, so far. Um, I think that was a great example of teamwork. Uh, last Friday, we uh, were set up to do, do the tour for Council Member Pacheco and um, George Gonzalez. And we had uh, Matt Latour and uh, Charles Carlson. Did I miss anybody mm -hmm. in Charles Carlson? Um, went on the tour, too, because they were interested. And uh, I was out because I had a really bad cold. But um, the reviews and the interest on the tour were really outstanding. So. If you hear George talking about ES, you'll know that he really got excited and came back with a real appreciation for the teamwork that goes on in ES and, and is a key to our success. So happy to report that, That's great. that we were um, successful with a tour and we'll be doing another one because Council Member Pacheco had to cancel at the last minute. So we'll, that'll get rescheduled in the future. Is that for Metro or for? We did Metro, yes. Metro, yeah. Okay, great. Question? Well, was first I put me on that tour too when you do it again. For the next the, one? For the next you one. You got it. And then I had a, a little report I'd like to make yeah, since please. we have extra time on our clock here. Uh, but uh, on the Clean Water Council, I, I was able to go down to Lake City and uh, visit the Mollus facility down there. The which facility? Uh, uh, the Mollus, uh, where they clean the water in that yeah. then. They look like clamps yeah. in that then. And uh, it was pretty fascinating where we have uh, DNR is uh, work to try to put it back in the river where a lot of them are. Uh, really uh, endangered and that type of thing. And two of the big issues are the Asian clams and then the zebra mussels, which people right. know, but they're actually raise them in the tanks and learn about how they work and how they really do a good job of cleaning water. And they can live up to 100 years, and we have like 48 uh, native uh, species in Minnesota. So mm -hmm. it was a pretty fascinating tour if you ever get a chance to go down there and, and that then, but learned a lot about, about them. So. I mussels, I should say mussels. Mussels, well, it's called mussels, yeah. yeah. Mussels, I apologize. I had yes. no idea that they lived that long. Yeah. It's yeah, amazing. It was, yeah, I guess they over, were over farmed, like they were like showing, like sometimes they were, you know, used like in construction projects or for buttons and that, so they were over um, fished or, or cultivated yeah. and that, so they really got a lot of work to bring them back, but they're doing good work there, so. Very cool. Very good. All right, with that, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.